All right, how we doing? We got sound? We got sound. We got video? We got video. All right, perfect. Throw on the glove, and we'll clean the screen, and we'll get this shit started. Now, if you're watching this, you're watching on YouTube, so do the little YouTube dance, like, comment, subscribe, all of that horse shit that makes YouTube happy. And remember, you're not doing this to help out my channel. That's a terrible reason to do this stuff. When you like a video, you're telling YouTube, I like this kind of video. And YouTube will try to show you more videos like that. So, click like on this video if you want to see more videos like this. If you want to see more videos specifically from me, whether they're like this or not, then click subscribe. If you just have something to say about the video, go ahead and comment. YouTube will use that to recommend stuff to you, but it won't typically hold on to that for an extended period of time unless you continue engaging with similar videos. And if you ring the notification bell, you hit the little bell icon and all of that shit, what you're telling YouTube is, tell me about videos like this as soon as they come out. And that puts you kind of in, in the beta test team for a video. See, the, uh, the way that the YouTube algorithm works, actually, I should, uh, I should jump onto the Discord. I upgraded to Windows 11, and uh, I'm still not used to it, and it's frustrating. But uh, let me go ahead and uh, jump into the actual stream. And we'll fire that up. Go live, and there we go. Okay, so as I was saying, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about how the YouTube algorithm works, because people get, like, really weird ideas about it, and essentially the way that it works is a creator uploads a video, and YouTube has to figure out who wants to watch this video. YouTube does not care if you make money. Okay, they, they don't care. They care if they make money, but they don't give a shit if you make money. All right, if you upload a video and nobody wants to see it, they're not going to show it to anybody. They don't care how much you care about the subject, how important this subject is to you. So when you upload your video to YouTube, YouTube's first and foremost concern is, number one, do advertisers want to put ads on this? If advertisers don't really want to put ads on it, but they're like, yeah, okay, I guess there could be some ads. That's limited ads. That's what limited ads mean. There are always terrible advertisers on any platform that will advertise on anything. If those are the advertisers interested in a video like the one you just uploaded, that's when you get the little yellow monetization icon. If you're monetized, if you're in the partner program, all of that stuff, I'm assuming you understand that. You get the green icon if people that pay real money for real ads to reach real people actually want to put ads on your video. If you don't make a video advertisers like, you're not going to make a lot of money. YouTube doesn't care. All they care about is that enough people make enough videos that get the little green icon. They don't care if you're one of them. They don't care if your last video was one. They don't care if your next video was one. The only thing they care about is this one right now. Are advertisers going to want to pay money for this? And if the answer is no, they don't give a shit about your video. They're not going to show it to people. Now, once you put your video out there and YouTube decides whether there are going to be ads on it, and in my case, it, videos are not monetized. I don't give a shit because I don't like the way that whole thing works. We can talk about that some other time. But... Um, in my case, the videos are not monetized. So the primary thing I'm looking for is views and subscribers. I don't want views from people that don't want to watch my content. And I don't want subscribers who aren't interested in watching more of my content. Okay? So that's the same way that YouTube feels. And what they want to do is they want to put the content in front of people who will watch it and who will want to watch more of it. Because they want to keep you on the platform. They want to keep you on the platform, even if they can't put ads on my video. If you watch my video, and then you watch another video like mine, and that other video has ads, that's good for them, because then they make money. 
That's all YouTube cares about. They are not here to support you as a creator. They are not here to give you a career. They are not here to pay you. They are not here to make you famous. They are not here to help you go viral. YouTube is there to make YouTube money. That's it. If you're not helping YouTube make money, they don't care about you. Hold on, I gotta blow my nose. So that's the, uh, that's the important thing to recognize there. And when YouTube is trying to figure out whether this video is going to make money, the first thing they do is they take a group of people that are subscribed to your channel and want notifications right now. They want all notifications. And then they take people that have notifications turned on, but it's just some notifications. And then there are some people that are subscribed to you but don't have notifications turned on. And then there's people that aren't subscribed but that like the kind of videos you make. And then there are just random people. And they take all of these five groups and they go, which of these groups is interested in this video? If you make a video that isn't like your usual content and your subscribers are not going to like it, YouTube doesn't care as long as somebody likes it. You might be doing something new and different and extreme and everybody outside of your audience would love it. So YouTube is going to test those five little things. And once they've tested those things, they're going to put the video out to more and more people in the groups where it's performing well. If your video is doing well in general, you should see that about a third of the people watching your videos are subscribed to your channel. The other two-thirds should be people that aren't subscribed to your channel. People that either have said they like content like yours or have not said they like content like yours, but YouTube thinks they may like it. That is YouTube trying to help your channel grow. If YouTube is trying to help your channel grow, that's good. Now remember, they don't care about you and your audience and your money. What they care about with growing your channel is how many people you can get on YouTube and keep watching YouTube. That's what they care about. That's the only thing they care about. There's no mystery to the algorithm. They're not suppressing this subject or that subject or the other subject. They don't give a shit. If anything like that happens, it's a mistake and they want to fix it. Because no matter what subject it is, unless it's like something YouTube specifically doesn't want on the platform, no matter what subject it is, there are people on YouTube that want to see that subject. And YouTube wants those people to stay on YouTube and to watch your content, because your content delivers that. Anyway, now we've gone off topic on that. Um, you may have seen me over the course of the week talk about uh, a picture of Osana Pakura that I'm doing, and you can see it right here on the, uh, on the screen where I'm... Uh, where I'm messing around with it. I have an image of her outfit over on the left, and I've got the uh, I've got kind of the flat shading version of uh, of most of it over on the right. It needs some messing around and fixing, but uh, that's a thing that I'm working on. But let's um let's come back over to the cobblestones, and there's a there's a bunch of shit. I need to fix on this. And um, before I really get into that, I do want to kind of talk about... I'm not trying to become a professional artist. I feel like some people have, uh, have gotten the wrong impression. I'm not trying to become a professional artist who does commissions. I'm doing this stuff so that I can put graphics in my games. I don't really care about commissions and all of that shit. And, um, and one of the things I wanted to kind of just vaguely discuss for a while is, um, is uh, the games that I have on the slate, the games that I've got planned, largely revolve around a cast of characters, and I have to do a bunch of character design for them. Specifically, 
I need about uh, I need about two dozen character designs, about a dozen female and a dozen male for uh, for the projects that I've got slated. And uh, the first and most important group of those is going to be the female characters who are going to form the uh, we're going to form the quote unquote adversaries in Groping Festival. And um, Groping Festival's primary uh, function is going to be to uh, to kind of test out how to get stuff up on Steam and get it working properly and write games with the Gato engine and, uh, and get them working. But, uh, it's okay if it doesn't make any money. The primary thing is to, uh, get the experience of putting this stuff out there. Because that's the important thing, is to get shit out there. Get that a little. So, um, so the thing is, I have to do these character designs so that I can get them into the game. And I have really put no effort to them. So that's something that I need to uh, need to put some time in the near future. And uh, I don't know when exactly I'm going to do that. I don't know whether I'm going to do that on stream or not. I might. I might not. I'm just kind of rambling. Right, right now. Get about other things. Things I need to fix on this cobblestone road is that all of these rocks just in the Oh. Yeah, the colors are are too vivid. Yeah, a little more relaxed and whatnot. I don't know what the. It's just kind of a rambling shit stream. I am getting worked.
Um, worthwhile work. Back that up. See these, um, rocks. I don't know what the scale is supposed to be. Okay. Is that a good scale? Is that the right, um, is that the right type of scale for it? You know what? Let's, um, Let's try a new palette. Let's go over here. It's, um, that's proper. So, all right. Grab that. Grab this and that is to be saturated to like that. We need to do the same with this. Saturate tighten it up. That one. Saturate here again. So if we've got more of that. Now, the other thing is that um, I really kind of screwed the pooch on the, uh, on the perspective. Because when you look at this, when you look at kind of the depth of the field, really what we want from our perspective is something more like this. We want our area to kind of run in this direction. Got a bunch of stuff. Shadow. Now, okay. Do a um, we'll do sort of a grid work look here. And let's work from that. We'll use a uh, want to do is follow these guides same time. Slavishly stick to. Let's fix this perspective. I really wanted to kind of talk about the um, but I also feel like a little too What is going on there? Ah, the highlight light. 
Comic that highlight shit out of there. There. I thought I discovered an intro. I could hold the button. It's interesting. I let go of it. Done. But no. Having more or less that look and feel. Now what? Places still follow effective. He's in. Seen. A lot of the red ones. Some. Not a whole lot. It's kind of beige one. Those with the do here. More or less completely. Big. Big. Thank 
they get rid of Brown up something. Okay, and this point. Uh, okay, so now if we scroll out from that, you can see that. Uh, wow, that. That's actually pretty good, just like as it stands. Man, that... That is a surprisingly good-looking cobblestone road. Now, at this point... At this point, it's all just a matter of... Jumping into our shadow lane. We do in terms of that's actually really good. That works. Italy, and it takes time, but 
doesn't take a lot of time. Well, the reason why say.
question. Especially precise one. But I don't think I need that. I back off of it. Actually, it looks really good. That's not a whole lot of work either. I mean, that actually. Favor. We've actually got a pretty good cobblestone road, just like right there. That actually, that reads. That's a cobblestone road. That reads as a cobblestone road. That's clearly and obviously a cobblestone road. And I'm really, really happy with that. It's relatively simple, too. All you got to think about is um, the... Uh, you just got to think about the light direction is coming from this way. So we've got a shadow here and a shadow here because the light's hitting it up here. And then I don't think I need to do any highlighting, but if I did I 
I don't think I do. I think that's I think that's about right. That looks like cobblestone. Holy shit. That was a lot faster and easier than I expected. Although, um, it did take like half an hour. You figure that uh, between that and the rest of the road, it's going to take probably two to three hours just to get cobblestones all the way across that whole thing. But man, that... That works! It's a little bit impressionist, so when you really zoom in, it's not perfect, but it does read and come across. That works pretty well. Crap, it's 42 minutes in already. Um... Anyway, yeah, that's kind of, uh, put that stuff straight on layer two. Um, let me, let's grab the lasso. How about all this here? Cut and paste that on it. Turn it off. There we go. Yeah. Turn that off. All of that excess stuff. There. Palette and light. Okay. Yeah. Without the shadow layer, we uh, we still have kind of a cobblestone road, but that just really kind of makes it pop. And that's just the simple multiply layer with some uh, the same general same color that you're uh, shading over top of. So yeah. Um, that actually worked real well. Not what I was planning to talk about. Planning to talk about something completely unrelated, but... I kind of, uh... Kind of got the cobblestone road figured out at this point. Awesome. And you can see now when, uh, when you kind of zoom in over here... That is, uh, that doesn't really look like a road. Looks like a bunch of rocks. That looks more like a road, but still, that's at the wrong angle. This, this looks like a road. That's got an appropriate perspective on it. All right, um... Yeah, that's uh that's uh that's the shit, man. That's uh that that's what I'm talking about. So uh yeah, that'll uh that'll be the stream, I guess. Nobody bothered showing up, which is fun. I don't mind. No one bet. But I did kind of nail the uh the cobblestone road. I'm happy with this. I think I might do a little more tweaking on the method. Like maybe I don't want to use quite so much light gray. Maybe I want to use um, 
Maybe I want to use some other like colors, maybe something darker. But um, yeah, I'm happy with the method on this. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and call it because um, cause I got some stuff that I'm working on. Well, I, stuff that I'm working on. I'm, uh, I'm playing a bunch of Vampire Survivors clones. That's why I'm thinking a lot about the whole games and cast of characters thing, because as I'm playing all of these games of similar types, which uh, at present I'm playing, let me, let me pull this up. Um, wait, Steam needs to restart. There's an update to Steam. It needs to restart. So there we go. And we'll come on down here. I've got, uh, I've got five Vampire Survivors clones that I've been working with. Uh, the first one that I really kind of got hooked on was Holocure because I'm a huge Hollow Life simp. Could you, could you guess from the uh, from the Osada Pakora thing that I'm working on? Could you guess I'm a big old Hollow Life simp? Um, once I really got started playing Holocure, I picked up a I picked up a game called Rogue Genesia, which was surprisingly really really good. And then I wanted to see the original, so I picked up Vampire Survivors itself, and then I went and picked up 20 Minutes Till Dawn, and then I picked up something called Nomad Survival. And, um, yeah, I've cleared all the achievements in Vampire Survivors and all the achievements in 20 Minutes Till Dawn, and Nomad Survival, I've got, like, got, like, a half dozen. Seven out of 116. So uh yeah, I need to uh I need to get another 109 achievements in there and that's going to that's going to be a slog, but uh I really want to see how Nomad Survival handles progression. One of the things that I've been thinking about these uh Vampire Survivors clones and just roguelikes in general is um they're not fun until they are. When you start when you first start playing any of these games, they're very frustrating. You can only get through a couple of minutes and you die. But as you get through that couple of minutes over and over again, if you keep plugging away at it, then you start getting five minutes in and ten minutes in, and then there's like a wall that breaks because you get enough skill as a player to, uh, to work with the game in particular that you're playing, and you also buy enough upgrades that you can make it through the entire game system now what what i like about um what i like about nomad survival let me go ahead and uh, pull it up so i can show you the screen probably also want to uh, turn the music down or off let's uh, go to options uh music style exciting or mellow let's turn There we go. Let's turn the music way down. There we go. And uh, and here's the thing. The options menu is a uh, is a great example because there are so many options. There are so many options that you can turn on and off and you can do all of this stuff that uh that a lot of a lot of games just don't let you change they don't let you flip things around but uh but the options on this game allow you to do all kinds of stuff and on top of that when you get to the uh when you get to the upgrades there's a whole bunch of different upgrades that cost coins there's a bunch of upgrades that cost gemstones and of course, you might ask, where do you get gemstones? And if you start the game, you select your character and you select your uh, process and then you select the mode and then you've got level modifiers and you've got all of this stuff you can do to uh, make the game harder. So you can do all kinds of stuff to just like alter everything.
And as you go through and alter this stuff, you can see down here that it alters the uh, gemstone multipliers. So you can crank everything way the hell up. And you can get like all of this stuff on there. And then you've got uh, challenges, and I'm not sure what the uh, what the challengers are. Oh yeah, but uh, but you have all of this stuff that you can do to um, to improve the number of gemstones that you get. And of course, uh, I'm a big old pussy, and I keep everything down on normal, and I don't uh, I don't jack stuff up, but. Um, but it gives you a whole lot of options, and you kind of have this infinite replayability situation because there are so many things that you can alter, and I really like that. But at the same time, I feel like maybe this is too much complexity for a game. I feel like there's an answer somewhere in the middle. I feel like there's a, there's something you could do in the middle of this that would be good. Choose your pet. Oh, you gotta spend, like, souls and stuff. Huh. Do you have to have a pet? Huh. Well, anyway, it's uh, it, it's got a lot of options. There's a lot of stuff in there that you can uh, that you can mess with, and uh, and I've been messing around with this and just kind of going. Uh, this is an interesting kind of game, and you know, I'm looking at these kind of vampire survivors clones because uh, because that's like the thing I'm doing after Groping Festival, which is a basic clicker game. It's just, you know, click the image in the middle of the screen until the treasure falls out. And, uh, and in this particular game, the image in the middle of the screen is an anime chick, and the treasure that falls out is panties. Because I think that's funny. And, uh, I don't know, it's vaguely problematic, but but there's an in-game there's an in-game explanation. But these aren't real women. They're Pantsugami, the Japanese panty spirits. But, um, yeah, I've been playing Nomad Survival a lot, and just kind of looking at that, and that's the um, that's the thing I'm working on at the moment. So, um, so I got that, and I got uh, I got this. Um, gotta save my images. Always save your stuff so you don't lose it and shit. But, um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I've been playing Nomad Survivors and it Nomad Survival, and it's a pretty cool game. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, uh, so that's yeah, that's like the stream for this week. That's the thing that I'm working on right now is kind of examining games. That's why I started out talking about games and. Saying, you know, I'm primarily a game developer. That's the thing that I do. Well, uh, you know what? What if I alter this layer? Layer. Total correction. What if I put this back on normal? Now I go edit, total correction. Good 
Turn off clipping the layer below. Huh. Let's erase that. Go to Edit, Tonal Correction. Why can't I do Tonal Correction on this layer? Edit, Tonal Correction. It won't let me do it. Okay, well, fuck it. Put the layer below and we'll put it back on Multiply. And that will be that. Um, I will mess with this at some other date. Um, yeah, that's like that. That's the hour. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end the stream. And uh, and yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be the stream for the week. So um, okay, bye. <laughs>